to start off, we need to talk about something called Beer's Law. Now, what Beer's Law tells us is that as we dilute a solution, or if we take a solution from being very concentrated to being less concentrated, that the amount of light that can pass through that solution, if it's translucent, okay, translucent meaning that it has a color to it, but we can still see through it. So things like Kool-Aid or Scope or Windex, those are all translucent type of solutions. So if we have a translucent solution and we change its concentration, we actually can calculate the differences in concentration based off of how much light passes through that. Okay, so that's Beer's Law. We'll spend more time with Beer's Law in a lab in, the, in this section on there. So we spend most of our time dealing with Beer's Law as kind of a lab experience. Here's a video on Beer's Law and gives you some more details on it. When monochromatic light, which is light of a specific wavelength, passes through a solution, there is a quantitative relationship between the solute concentration and the intensity of the transmitted light. This relationship is known as Beer's Law, or is also referred to as the Beer-Lambert Law. As a concentration of solution increases, less light is transmitted through it, and we say then that more light is absorbed. Beer's Law observes that there is a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration. In spectrophotometry, we can measure both absorbance and transmission, but more often absorbance is used as a more useful measure. If we did an experiment like Beer and Lambert and set up our appropriate wavelength and measured the absorbance A of a solution at a range of concentrations C, our resulting graph would be a straight line showing a linear relationship between absorption and concentration. The other constant factors in this equation are L, the path length of the sample, and epsilon, which is the molar absorptivity, which will depend on the wavelength used and the chemistry of the sample. So stating the Beer's Law equation in full, A equals epsilon times L times C. And using the equation of a straight line, y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the intercept, we can use these graphs to calculate the concentrations of unknown samples, and this is the basis of the spectrophotometer assay. Okay, so in this video, they kind of out, outline a couple different things. One, uh, the use of cuvettes, these are these kind of square looking uh, test tubes, and passing a beam of light through them. Now, the wavelength, they're shown here is 450 nanometers. That wavelength is actually matched to whatever color your solution is. So depending on the solution, uh, you would choose a different wavelength of light based on that. So that's kind of where the EPS line comes from. The L is just a variable of how big your actual uh, cuvette is because obviously the thicker this is or the wider that gap is, the more absorption you're going to get. So if you're running this equation, um, to make this equal, you have to factor in, well, how wide is that actual cuvette? And then finally, there's your concentration for C. Now, the nice thing is, whenever you're running an experiment like this, you typically only test one chemical at a time, and you use the same size cuvette. So if epsilon is always the same chemical, and the length of the cuvette is always the same also, um, if we remove them from the equation, they're no longer equal, but we can say that A is now proportional to C. Basically we're making this linear or this direct relationship. So it really doesn't matter where the intercept is, it really doesn't matter what the slope is in terms of figuring out what's going on. What really matters is this linear regression or this proportionality between A and C. If we move over to this um, little applet here, same concept but I have a little bit more control over it here. So here they have a drink mix, which um, could be anything. It could be Kool-Aid, it could be Gatorade, whatever you want it to be. And what you need to do is turn on a beam of light. And notice how the beam of light here is uh, green going through a red drink mix because you want to have a, a very different wavelength passing through because you want to know how much is absorbed by uh, this color. And if I change my concentration, you notice how on the right-hand side in the green here, we're measuring transmittance, basically how much light is transmitted originally, okay? And that's a percentage, so it's anywhere from 100% transmitted down to, you know, in this case, the lowest I can get here is 0.95% transmitted. Now, there is a 
conversion between transmittance and absorbance. And it isn't just uh, a percentage or something simple. There's actually a natural log function within this. The nice thing is we don't need to do that. Um, when we set up our experiment to do Beer's Law, we'll just tell the lab pros to instead of measuring for transmittance to measure for absorption. So they'll actually do that calculation for us. So instead, if we move this back and forth now, if you have zero concentration, you know, zero of the light gets absorbed. If you have, you know, a concentration of 400 millimoles, then you get an absorption of 2.02. .02. This is not a percentage. This is not a, um, something that either can be 100% or 0%. This number actually changes depending on what you have. So, for example, if we go to cobalt chloride and we bring this down to, from zero all the way up to 250 millimoles, we have 1.81. So this number here isn't really a percent. It's something different. Don't worry about the uh, the label here. It's basically just the uh, the absorption is basically how much has been absorbed, how much light is absorbed. If we move down to something very different, let's say like copper sulfate, which we'll be doing in lab actually, notice how our beam of light changes to a different wavelength because we have a blue solution now. The same idea. We go from 0% absorption all the way up to here 1.92 absorption. Um, and again, this would change depending on how wide this cuvette is. So we could actually vary this in this applet and change the size of my cuvette. And notice how the wider this is, the more light gets absorbed. The narrower this is, the less light that gets absorbed. Which would make sense because if there's less of it here, there's less of it to absorb it. Um, so that would be that kind of length of the cuvette. The beauty is, again, we're going to use the same cuvettes for everything. So that's a variable that we can kind of eliminate from our process. And we're only going to use one chemical, so that's another variable we can eliminate from our process. Okay. Um, so if you take a look at this, when we do the actual lab, what we'll do is we're going to start with a known concentration, whatever that happens to be, um, record that concentration, and then we'll record the absorption. And then we'll move to a new known concentration and a new absorption. And basically we're going to record several data points, and very much like they did here where you had the three different solutions at three different concentrations that will match up with three different um, absorptions and we can build a linear regression from that. Finally, once we have this linear regression, I can then give you an unknown solution, something that you do not know what its concentration is, and simply by testing the absorption of that in our colorimeters, you can then find that point along the linear regression, find that point online, and tell me what that concentration is. So ultimately, this is a method or a laboratory method to, define, to find concentration of solutions when the concentration is unknown. Okay? And it comes back from being Beer's Law or the Beer-Lambert Law. All right? um, guys, that's it, everything for Beer's Law. So that should give us a really good introduction to it. And then when we go into the lab on this and you actually run the procedure about this, uh, you'll kind of see how this works in practice and you'll actually be able to solve for an unknown concentration there. Uh, thank you for your time.